Good morning, everybody. And if you're opening our studio, you should see on the left side your console. On the right side, in white, the environment history and Git, as well as on the bottom right, your files. Since most of you probably have a file directory somewhere else, that's the first thing we're going to change. What you do is like you go into your sessions, set working directory, and then choose directory. In my case, this is in the downloads folder in week two. What has changed is now that on the right side of the bottom, you will see all of the files you downloaded. What we're going to do next is open the script. A new window has appeared on the left side, as well in blue, where the script and all of its details are shown. The first thing what we want to do is load the data. We can do that in two ways. Either we put our mouse onto the line where we say read CSV and press Control enter What you see now is a little stop sign, which means that your computer is working reading the individual files, every line by line. And now the computer has loaded all of the data, and we see on the right side, in the environment, there's a new line, properties, which is exactly the name we gave the data frame in the script. It has 389,000 observations, that means these are the lines in our site, as well as 28 variables, which are the columns. This is one way of looking at it. By, double, by clicking on it with a single click, you can see, like in an Excel, the whole data set. Well, it shows you the first 15 rows. And you can see on the left side at the bottom that there are 300 plus thousand entries. There are certain commands which give you an overview of the data itself. str is looking at the structure. Again, I'm using command and enter. And it will give me then in the console at the base on the left side in blue, what these individual parameters are. It goes from every variable to the next variable for example, transaction date is a factor with different levels. In comparison to that, transaction value is a numerical parameter. Numerical parameters such as 540,000 and so on and so forth. Transaction types is a factor which only has two levels. It only has two types. It has rental and sales observations. The next couple of uh, entries is looking at the data itself. So if you press head and then the dataset properties, I do again command and entry, enter, you get a overview of what the individual parameters actually are. So it shows you the first six um, entries in your dataset. The same is true for tail, but tail shows you the last six. And if you look in comparison, now you have tail gives you the IDs of 389,000. But we want to have something a bit more clever. We not just want to look at the individual rows because it doesn't help us. We want to do a bit of descriptive statistics. So one of the best commands for this is summary. Summary, I press again, command and enter gives you, for all of your variables, for all of your parameters in your data set, a summary. That means, for example, in transaction date, because it is a discrete factor, we have a, it gives us the mode. For the 1st February 2012, we have the most observations, 5,010 in total. The next most common uh, value is the 31st of May 2012. In contrast to that, transaction value, because it is a continuous observation, a continuous value, we get first the minimum and maximum, which gives us the range, as well as the median, the middle number, 
as well as the mean, also known as the average. For transaction date, it also gives us the mode, but since there are only two, we can clearly see that there are more rental observations than sales observations, which also explains why the median, 450, and the mean, nearly 200,000, are so far apart. Rental observations have normally rental by week, which is below $1,000, while sales observations are property sales, and they are mostly in the hundreds of thousands. So therefore, we can see this is a bimodal data set. It has two data observations. They are actually two different things. It has rental as well as sales observation. And therefore, the prices or the transaction values are varied. The same is true, of course, for the type. They are houses and units and so on and so forth. For every other parameter, you also get these kind of information. We know the number of bedrooms, we know the bathrooms, we know the average number of bathrooms, the median, and so on. In some cases, there are also something we call NANs, not available. So parking, for example, is not described. So sometimes it is just not defined. Sometimes it has 1, sometimes it has 0, sometimes it has 20, apparently. But in many cases, we just don't know because it is not stated. The next thing what we want to do is like we want to know what kind of variables we actually have. So the command is called names, which gives us only the variable names or the header if we're looking back into the property data sheet. This is a useful uh, tool in cases where you have lots of parameters. 28 variables I can keep in my mind, 147 it's beyond my capabilities. In some cases, you want to have the absolute numbers of observations. So the number of row, also num row, n row, gives you exactly the number of rows. If you execute that, you see at the base 389,724, which is exactly the same as in your environment data, the number of observations. The number of columns, n col, gives you 28, which is exactly the same as the number of variables. So we have a couple of tools now available, but we want to have more tools. Tools which we might not write ourselves, but import from somebody else. So there are lots of tools available for our studio, and you can Google them. There are literally thousands, and they are called packages. Packages are collections of tools which are available for usage and I encourage you to do that, to use them. To do, to actually use them, you have to install them first and then activate. To install, you have to type in install.package, which is then starting a process. That process might take a while. It's downloading, it's unpacking, so don't get excited about it. And sometimes it also needs to compilation. So please just press yes and then it starts downloading. There might even be some errors. Hasn't really discouraged anybody yet. But so just be aware that they might take a moment, might have to do something, and just be patient. Very good. I might have to cut this uh, a little bit, but it took more than a minute. What happened? It downloaded all of the packages required to run this little package dplyr, dplyr. And if you're looking on the right side where your files are, there is a header called packages. If you click on it, you can see available packages. In my case now, they're not activated. Some of them are here, graphics and GR devices and other. But we want to have dplyr activated. So you can do that in two ways. Either you click on it in that list. 
or unclick it, doesn't matter. And you see the console is reacting, and it's telling you that it does something. Don't worry about it. It's a very verbose uh, software. It tells us you all the time what's happening. Alternatively, you can also just you look at library, dplrr, and activate. I prefer this way because if you do it in the script, then it is definitely activated first. Secondly, you don't have to do it every time when you run the script new, it's just doing it automatically. So you type it once and it's done. Now you're able to use the functions in this package and they are select, filter, mutate, group by, summarize and arrange. So let's start from the top. Let's say I want to know what kind of variables I have, for example, names. I only want to have a subset of that. I'm not interested in yields. I'm not interested in the date. So I'm only interested in the transaction values, transaction type, area size, bedrooms, suburbs, LGAs and SLAs. What you do is you say select properties, that's the data set, and then what kind of parameters you actually want to have. So don't select, just put your mouse onto the, uh, onto the line and then command enter. What does this do? First, whenever you have something called property select or whatever you want to call it, and then an equal sign, that means it creates a new data set. And that is defined as whatever comes after the equal sign. So, after I execute it, on the right side, we have now a second properties set, data set. It's called property select, and that has exactly the same number of observations, but less variables. And the variables are exactly the ones which we defined within the select command. And if we are looking now at names of properties select, voila, are exactly the seven parameters or variables we have defined before. The next thing is unique. That means we want to see what kind of unique attributes they are. So property select, transaction type, what kind of unique uh, uh, variables do we have? We have two levels, rent and sales. That allows us now to fil filter. That means we want to filter a subset. We want to only talk about, in this case, sales, like sold properties. So what we do is like we filter the property select data set by transaction type is sale. And then we create a new properties data set, which is called properties filter. Again, I just execute by putting command enter. And we have a new data set in the environment. The environment now has properties filtered or filter, which is only 126,000 observations. Why is that? Because it only contains sold properties. It has exactly the same variables as the previous data set which we selected from. So what else? We can mutate. Mutate means we are adding a parameter. So what we do? We mutate the properties filter by adding a new parameter called price per area. What is it? Well, we take the transaction value, the price, and divide it by the area. We execute this and create a new properties data set called properties mutate. Properties mutate now has, instead of 126 and 7 variables, it has a 20, 126 observations and 8 variables. So if you look at them, I open properties filter by clicking on it, as well as properties mutate. The difference is that additional parameter at the end. I now go back into the script. As per usual, I advise you to be working intelligently and not hard. So what I want you to learn is how to chain commands. That means all of the steps I've done before, individual data sets, I want that you com combine into one go. How do you do that? There's this command using a percentage larger than percentage sign. That means, and then. 
So what do you do? You say select properties and then select and then filter and then mutate. So what we can do is we can create a new properties data set, which is first selecting only the certain parameters we want to have, then filter only the sales out of the transport transaction types, and then mutate by adding the parameter price per area. I select the whole thing. And now, please, this is a side note, um, always select the whole command, because if you only select a subset of the command, it will not be able to execute. I do that, command and enter. Et voila, we have a new properties data set called properties new. And it is exactly the same as properties mutated, which we are created after several steps, just in one go, properties new. Now we learn another command, and that's grouping. Grouping is useful, useful if you want to create something like an overview, and in this case we talk about individual LGAs. So what we're doing is we create a group. We have a, um, a new data set where we group every LGA and we'll want to have an information such as the mean price and the max area. By command enter, we create that. I open this file, properties mean trans value. What you see here is now that we have every LGA written on the, in the first column, then the mean price of it and the maximum area. I urge you now to add another parameter, the min area. How do you do that? I'll leave that to you for a sec. You probably have figured it out by now because it's quite simple. It's quite simple because it's straightforward the same as we have had in the other part. You type min for minimum, open the bracket and then area and already the parameter is coming up by itself, then enter. You select the whole command, command enter, go to the means property and you have now the minimum area. Well done. A range is a not often common and it's not commonly used parameter what, uh, function. What you do there is you can arrange the sequence of the observations in a data set either ascending or descending. A range is ascending, so if you look at them and then go into the data set, you can see that it starts at the lowest uh, mean price, Murable is apparently the cheapest area to buy a property in our data set. And it goes up to Bundura, where it is the most expensive. You can do the same thing by just adding the command descending. Well, that's very helpful, but we want to have that. Now in the second part, we go into like summary statistics. And all of the functions, which I just started on, are available as simple functions. For example, you can ask for means, minimum, maximum, median, standard deviation, and variance. They're always available and you can use them accordingly. As a final step, and this is more like a, that you see what's coming up in after we work with GIS data, is that you're creating a um, summary, a summary with all of the information you want to have about your LGAs. And in this case, we make it as a minimum, maximum, median, standard deviation, total number of observations. That's very important because sometimes you might get uh, outliers in a small data set, which then skew your information. So we create a summary of the statistics. We are, we are doing the same as we've done before. We're chaining commands for the properties data set. We filter them, we group them, we summarize, and then we create the data set. Summary statistics now has 65 observations, which are the number of LGAs and, pro and property types combined, as well as nine variables. Let's look at it. What you see is that every LGA comes twice. 
once for house and once for unit. So the minimum price for a unit in our data set was 220,000 in Banjul, while the minimum price for a house in Banjul was 280,000. And then the same for maximum, the mean price as well, and so on and so forth. You have now a very well organized and cleaned data set. This is not normally the case. Normally you have observations where there are missing data points. So you have to deal with this. In the case here, I want that you create a little vector with a couple of observations. It's called Y. And in that Y, there is one observation, which is a NA. And so if you're calculating the mean of that, it gives you a error, an error, because it can't divide NA. It's not a real number. But you can ask to be calculating this mean by removing all NAs. So the command is called NA remove yes please, yes. So NA.RMA equals true. Et voila, you can have the mean of this little vector of 5.2. Whenever you're done with uh, manipulating your data, write it out. That means make a new file outside of uh, your current data set where you save it. So the command for this is write a CSV. From what? From your uh, command, from your data set summary statistics with the name summary statistics CSV and you want to have no header. That's what that means. Whenever you have a question about how a function works or how it go, uh, how you, does it work. And I'm going to use mean here. You can cr uh, press F1. If you're working like me on a Macintosh computer, you have to cl uh, click Fn, function, next, or whatever it means, uh, and then F1. Then on the right side at the base, you come up with a explanation of what this function does. First, you get a gener generic description of what it does, as well as uh, how you use it, what kind of arguments you can add, for example, the removal of NAs, and then at the end, you have examples. And these examples you can copy-paste into your uh, script and then execute. When we're coming back in a couple of weeks to the R Studio. We're going to use ggplot to create plots. Plotting data is very important because it gives us a very intuitive way to understand the distribution and skewness and uh, information about that. What do we do? Um, ggplot2 is a library which allows you to do this. So the first thing I, uh, I would like you to do is install and activate it. It's installing. and then activating. So you can check in your package file, package folder, you have ggplot2 and it's activated. The first thing on how to use this is creating a data set, which we call data to plot, where we filter sales data, uh, where we filter for only the sales data points, which are within Melbourne center. Command enter for activation, and then we create a ggplot. That means we're creating from this data plot within this, uh, where we're looking at bedrooms and we're plotting bedrooms versus transaction values. We're plotting them in points and we're creating a smooth line between them. I activate that now because that will take a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds until it's done. So we're creating with this command a plot. And this is on the bottom right. You have a plot folder where we can see that. So if we press zoom, it creates, opens a new window where you can look at the individual uh, LGAs 
within Melbourne, uh, where we are plotting the prices versus the number of bedrooms. And what you can see is that houses with higher number of bedrooms have also a higher price. That's the end of our current tutorial, and I'll see you again to the next step in our data journey. Thanks very much, and see you soon.